Prologue. This felt like the beginning of the end. Kyle sat at the edge of his bed and looked deep into the mirror in front of him and was horrified with what he saw. Perhaps if he looked hard enough, the picture would change, but it didn't. Before him was a disheveled man in his mid-thirties, unshaven, slightly built, and in serious need of a lust for life. It's his eyes, those damn eyes. They just can't hide the truth. They are a true window into your soul, and his soul wasn't doing well lately. It was like all the exuberance and joy that he once had as a young police cadet had slowly been drained out of him. It was as if he'd been wrung out of every ounce of joy. He was a prune of discontent. You know, those dried-up, shriveled pieces of fruit your grandmother used to eat with her morning tea? He was wrung dry like your Sunday laundry or a hyperactive L.A. chef getting every drop of juice out of his last remaining lemon. He squinted his eyes, hoping to change the image before him, but it didn't work. He remained barely recognizable from the man he once was. Okay, enough of this depressing self-evaluation, he thought as he begrudgingly lifted his lethargic body off the bed and headed to the bathroom. Once again, he was going head-on with the everyday drudgery of work. The commute to work was short, so Kyle wasn't left with his thoughts for too long. This was always a bonus. His own thoughts could be a hellish trap of doubts, insecurities, and self-loathing. He generally tried to avoid thinking at all costs. He turned the music up louder as he pulled up to the Fullerton police station. Police officers walked at a brisk pace and with purpose throughout the Spanish colonial revival architecture. As he walked through the courtyard... One of the officers made eye contact with him. Kyle tried to avoid it, but as their eyes locked, the officer yelled out, Why do you look so damn grumpy, Kay? Lighten up, old man. Don't need the advice, buddy. Leave the psych evaluation to the experts, Kyle said back with gritted teeth and a large swath of thinly veiled sarcasm. The other officer didn't seem to mind. Kyle walked into the open plan office area. God, he hated these places. Is this really what all workplaces look like now? Everyone stuck in their tiny cubicles, tapping away on their computers, haunted by fluorescent lights, cramped spaces, and inane conversation. The police used to be reserved for the best of the best, but this place could easily be a paper-selling plant, just as much as a police precinct. Today, however, he had a purpose, so he headed straight for the captain's office. As Kyle opened the captain's door, he felt everyone's piercing eyes in the back of his neck. He sat down and looked across at Captain Richard Mathis, who was in his late fifties, aging and somehow simultaneously laid back and yet incredibly intimidating. Kyle nervously moved back and forth in his seat. The badge around his neck swung back and forth violently with each move. He was a bubbling volcano of emotion, and he needed to get something off his chest. Look, Captain, I'm sick of this place. You're still working old-school cases, and it's a new-school world. We're doing Big Daddy Kane police work while everyone is riding out with Ray Shremerd. Ray who? Mathis asked, staring blankly at Kyle. Hip-hop, Cap, it happened. Turn on Power 106 once in a while. Look, what are you getting at? Mathis asked. Judging by the lines across his face, he was seriously annoyed. You got kids out here committing cybercrimes, and we got detectives out there walking the beat. The beat is the internet these days. I thought the beat was EDM, glow sticks, molly, and poorly dressed teenagers. Kyle chuckled to himself in his head. He was amazed that the captain even knew what EDM was, but Kyle guessed the captain had been called out to so many drug cases at these festivals, some of what was going on was bound to rub off. Look, Captain, I'm sick of wasting my time on all these Mickey Mouse cases, Kyle said. That Disneyland bust was some of your finest work. 
Kyle's head wobbled back and forth like a basketball bobblehead, uncontrollable in its frustration. Yeah, and that's my point. The kid was bragging on Facebook while I spent weeks interviewing every Disneyland employee. We don't even know how to catch this generation of criminals. We're always five steps behind in this police force. I've had enough. This was the moment Kyle had been waiting for. After years of frustration, biting his tongue, towing the company line, not causing trouble, being a subservient officer, protecting his career, today all that would come to an end. I quit. The weight, the weight that had been on him, suddenly lifted off. He felt light as a feather. Man, that felt good. As the years rolled by, Kyle had increasingly felt like he was working a dead-end job. He was always promised that his diligent work would be rewarded, that it would lead to something better. But the reality is that he had spent the good part of a decade slaving away on the road to nowhere. He desperately needed a change. This change for his own sanity. Mathis looked him dead in the eye. Kyle looked away, uncomfortable. Look, King, you are my best detective, the captain told him. Has this got anything to do with your breakup with your girlfriend? Don't make an emotional decision about your job. Think about this. The captain's voice was in a rare, low tone, demonstrating genuine concern. It didn't penetrate through to Kyle. He was well past caring about his job. Kyle took his badge off from around his neck, removed the gun from his holster, and placed them on the desk. Mathis looked at him. The lines on his face were now pulsating. He was highly annoyed. What the hell are you doing? Mathis yelled, waving his arms up and down in a violent artistic fashion as he pointed at Kyle's gun and badge laying on his desk. I thought that's what you did. Turn in your gun and badge when you quit your job as a police officer, Kyle answered, shrugging his shoulders. You watch too much TV, King. You are making a huge mistake. This can only end badly. Someone like you, with a lot of time on their hands, is a recipe for disaster. I've thought this through. If you want to leave, then take your badge and your gun... Go visit HR and fill out the exiting the workplace paperwork. Paperwork? It's just like this place. Ass backwards. I should be able to resign online. It's 2017. Kyle could feel the decibels in his voice rising like a perfectly cooked souffle. I'll whoop your ass online in a minute, shouted Mathis. Kyle looked back at the captain still in a state of shock. Did he really just do this? Go! Get the hell out of my office! Yep, he did it all right. He quit. Freedom at last. One. In his Chevrolet, Kyle pulled into the parking lot of an average, everyday Fullerton office block and looked at the sign on display in the entrance. It read, Helier Home Mortgage, A.G. Vassal, M.D., Dermatology, Social Media Detective Agency, Professional Investigations. Yep, this was real. He opened the car door and got out with a real spring in his step. He hadn't felt this much bounce since his days in college. Finally, he was free. A free man, a free bird, a free detective. No one to report to, no one psychoanalyzing him, no bloody rules and no regulations. He could get used to this. Today he was working crimes in a new digital world, a digital frontier, the wild, wild west of the 21st century, and he was the new sheriff in town. 
As he walked toward his office, he imagined himself pulling out a six-shooter and popping off a few rounds at the crooks on Twitter, Facebook, and Snapchat, exiting their online saloons, cracking cases wide open in 140 characters or less. Yeah, he was doing his own thing, and damn, it felt good. As Kyle walked into the office, he was greeted by Allie, mid-twenties, thick, pink-rimmed glasses, geeky, slightly awkward, but incredibly sexy and smart as a whip. It was good to see her again. He had missed her bright-eyed view of the world and youthful enthusiasm. They were kindred spirits in a twisted world. She was his loop into the younger generation. He always looked at her fondly, and Kyle was excited that she would join him in this new adventure. Allie, have I got any cases?' he asked excitedly. Allie was clearly a little distracted. She was sitting at her desk but was trying to take a selfie. Her phone was out in front of her. She had on a lot of makeup and red lipstick, and she was displaying all the facets of a generation that was obsessed with itself. Hang on. I'm trying to Snapchat this. The lighting in here is perfect right now. I look gorgeous. Kyle shook his head. Snapchat. It's a different world, and clearly not one for a mid-thirties guy, but he knew if he was going to make his business succeed, he needed to understand it. He had downloaded Snapchat, but had yet to snap anything. Instead, he had been observing the endless stories of people going out, walking their dog, eating food, and doing mundane things daily. He wondered how they thought that any of this was interesting to other people. Kyle muttered to himself, Generation Y or Generation I, Alexander Graham Bell would be turning in his grave. Allie finally looked happy with the photo she had taken and the filter she had chosen. She looked up and asked, Alexander who? Don't worry. Cases. Have we got a case yet? Kyle wanted to know. Not a lot. I got a grandmother who keeps getting poked on Facebook. Anything a bit more exciting? I didn't start this business to work for grandmas. Let me see, Allie answered. Oh yeah, I did get an interesting DM on Twitter earlier. Allie looked through the Twitter account on the laptop in front of her. The office was still looking a little sparse. Empty cabinets, empty folders. They offered the hope of future work and a bustling detective agency, at least in Kyle's mind. He liked the promise on display. He had managed to get a couple of desks, cheap laptops, iPads, and a working internet connection. The office would need a lot more work once they started getting regular clients coming in. Yeah, Allie said. A celebrity is getting trolled on Twitter and wants us to track down who is doing the trolling. Who's the celebrity? Jane Lake. Jane Lake, the comedian. Kyle couldn't hold back a laugh. God... She is someone who has a lot of enemies. You better take the case, Kyle. We need the money. I mean, after you insisted we get paid in bitcoins the last time. I can't pay my rent with bitcoins. I don't even know what those bit-whatevers are. I'm not sure what they are either, but I heard it was popular, so I thought we better jump on it. Well, bitcoins ain't gonna pay the bills, Kay, and we got a lot of bills. Allie said as she held up a pile of bills in Kyle's face and still managing to look cute while doing it. Trust me, Allie, we'll be rolling in it soon. Now let's go meet Jane. Kyle and Allie rolled up to Jane Lake's house. The driveway was paved like most modern-day streets. It was long. It led up to a sprawling 5,000-square-foot, four-bedroom house in Pacific Palisades. This is how you get to live when you have too much money, Kyle thought. Jane Lake is living large. No wonder everybody hates her, Allie said as they got out of the car. Kyle couldn't help but agree with her. Money, the root of all evil, or at least it was the cause of most of it. Money creates jealousy, hate, vindictiveness, all the worst qualities in humans, and Kyle had seen them play out in many of the cases he had worked on when he was with the police force. Each case had given him a disgust and genuine hatred for money, so much so that, as soon as he got any, he had to spend it. This explained why he was so broke and always struggling to pay the bills. Kyle enjoyed the struggle, though. 
he was happier that way. As Kyle and Allie entered the house, they were greeted by Sherita Lake, a woman in her late thirties, very attractive, and Jane's one and only daughter. Sherita welcomed them in, but it was clear from the pained look on her face that she was distressed. Was it because her mother was being harassed? In these parts of Los Angeles, it was hard to get a read on people. Often their strained expressions were the result of a heavy Botox treatment. Thank you for coming, Kyle. Sherita said anxiously. It's a terrible thing what is happening to my mother, just terrible. Yes, shocking. Do you get on social media much? Kyle asked. No, I deleted it all. It was taking up too much of my time, Sherita told them. It can get addictive, Allie chimed in with a surprising amount of effervescence. So I can rule you out of trolling your mother then. You're not jealous of her career? Kyle asked. He loved to poke and prod, hoping to get a reaction, to learn some hidden truth. Oh, please. I troll my mother in person. I don't need Twitter to do that. Sharita snapped back lightheartedly. Her response revealed nothing. Yeah, those red carpet specials are dynamite, Kyle said with a grin. Sharita rolled her eyes, smiled, then continued on. My mum will be here in a minute. I've got to pick up my daughter from Dan's class. Just wait here in the living room and she will be right in. She's in a meeting with her manager at the moment. Got it. Kyle nodded in agreement. You two are a cute couple, by the way, Sherita smiled at them. We're not a couple, Allie was quick to point out. Sure, Sherita said with a wink. Kyle was slightly amused at the accusation or assumption, but chose not to engage with it. As Sherita left the room, he walked around Jane's house admiring the many beautiful things on display. This surely wasn't a life he was used to. If he had ten grand, he wouldn't be using it for a giant vase in the middle of a living room. Red carpet specials are dynamite? Flattery doesn't look good on you, Kyle. Why don't you just stick to that whole hard-nosed detective facade? That's more your style, Allie said. Yo, I love E. Don't get it twisted. And my nose is very soft and pliable. You just have to get to know it. Allie was not impressed. She took a seat on the couch and looked back down at her phone. Left, 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 right, left, 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 she said to herself as her finger moved vigorously over her phone, swiping back and forth. What are you doing? Don't you ever get off that thing? I'm on Tinder. You have to find love somehow these days, Kyle. Love? The only thing you're going to find on Tinder is an STD. Unlike you, Kyle, I'm prepared to jump back into the dating game instead of being hung up on my ex. That stung, like a firm kick to the balls from some studded boots, but Kyle chose to ignore it. I prefer real-life dating, Allie. I'd rather meet people and know they actually exist rather than swipe on photos on my phone. Everything is so superficial these days. You don't know anything about these people online. Whatever. Still not over Lara, then? No. I'm somewhere between wallowing in self-pity and hopelessly wishing I could have her back. I'm sure shameless tender sex with strangers is just around the corner. Allie's head remained fixated on her phone. She was busy typing away. Uh, can I have a conversation with you without you looking down at your phone? This is the modern world. Kyle was often shocked when he looked around in public places, at the mall, on the bus, in restaurants, and noted that everyone seemed distracted. Instead of paying attention to what they were doing, they were looking down at their phones and no longer seemed to be present in life. They were unaware of what was going on around them, and they lived through their phones. They would rather record a moment than live it. It sure is a strange world these days. Allie finally looked up and deep into Kyle's eyes. He felt her presence and the weight of a serious moment. You need to move on, Kyle, she said. Get back out there. Tender sex may be just what you need. Anyway, I've got a tender date this weekend. 
so be jealous. I'm green with envy, he said. Where's your date? Laguna Beach, Sunday. Sounds like a classy guy, or someone from a long-forgotten MTV reality series. I win either way, Allie said, smiling. Jane Lake rushed into the room with immense energy, which belied her age. She was in her late seventies, fit, equipped with an acid tongue, and was sharp as Damascus steel. She moved about the room, clearly stressed out. Her manager, Anthony Lyons, was in his late fifties. He had graying hair and was equally anxious, pacing around her and looking very agitated. Kyle? Kyle King, I presume? Anthony asked. I hope you can help. We just didn't know who to turn to. The cops aren't interested. There seems to be very little they can do to stop all these cyber attacks. Are you going to be able to track down this guy who keeps trolling Jane on Twitter? Absolutely, Kyle answered. These are exactly the kinds of cases we specialize in. Especially since it was the only case on Kyle's books. It's absolutely disgusting, Anthony said with absolute loathing. These vile cowards spew hatred on the Internet. They are keyboard warriors, happy to take shots at comedy royalty anonymously because they don't have the balls to do it in real life. Shameful. Yeah, it's disgraceful, Kyle answered. This is the age we live in right now. People think they can get away with anything they say online, and they often do. Rest assured, I'm here to track down this troll, and I can assure you they will not get away with it. Anthony handed Kyle a piece of paper. I made a printout of some of the things the troll sent to Jane through Twitter. Kyle skim read the tweets on the piece of paper. Wow. Unbelievable that he wants to do what to her what? Is that even legal? Now that's just beyond the pale. This would make a hooker blush. Yeah, it's pretty horrific. Anthony shrugged his shoulders as he thought about the noxious tweets aimed at Jane. The things people think they can say online these days. When we took it to the police, they said they didn't have the resources nor the technology to investigate stuff like this. Typical. That's the police force these days, Kyle answered. They're set up to walk the street and bust someone for weed or running a red light, but they just aren't equipped to catch these Internet criminals. It requires a lot more sophistication that is lost in the bureaucracy. This is exactly why I started the Social Media Detective Agency. Someone must hold these people to account. Thank you, Kyle, Jane said. This has been really upsetting to me and my family. I have a pretty thick skin, but the things this person has been saying is utterly vile. If my granddaughter ever saw them... Jane's voice trailed off. Kyle asked, Do you have any idea who it could be? Do you have any enemies? Jane looked back at Kyle with a you gotta be kidding me, right? glance. Then she said, About seventy years worth of enemies? Do you want me to start from the top? Maybe Johnny Carson's ghost has come back to torment me. Is there any particular celebrity that you have upset lately? Anyone that seems particularly annoyed at what you've said? Kyle wanted to know. Jane thought a few seconds before answering. Not that I know of. Kristen Stewart hasn't been a fan. She wants to sue me. I doubt she would take to Twitter to get at me. The Kardashians aren't capable of a fully formed sentence, so that rules them out. Allie chimed into the conversation. Has anything happened lately at one of your shows? Anything that stands out? Not that I can think of, other than an odd heckler now and then, Jane answered. I'm trying out some new material at the comedy store tonight. You should come to the show and see if you spot anything. That's a good idea. The tweets directed at you have been quite personal and very descriptive. We may be dealing with a stalker, Allie responded thoughtfully. Great, said Jane. The first male attention I get in forty years and it's from a crazed stalker. It could be a woman, Allie suggested. Or a ladyboy. You never know with the internet, Kyle added. Even better, Jane deadpanned. People were lining up to get into the comedy store in West Hollywood. The crowd was very mixed and diverse, as you would expect on this side of town. Stand-up is a pretty tough gig, Allie, 
Kyle said. Maybe one of Jane's hecklers decided to take it to the next level. I'll bet. I've always wanted to see Jane stand up. This is exciting, Allie responded. Kyle couldn't help but be enthralled by Allie's excitement for everything. It was infectious and beginning to rub off on him. He could slowly feel the old, or young, Kyle coming back. Kyle and Allie walked into the club and through the backstage area. Allie had said she was excited to see a legend like Jane Lake, but once again she was busy taking selfies of herself. She was a complete and utter selfie addict. Jane's manager, Anthony, was busy on his phone, and Sharita was writing Jane's jokes on big placards. Jane was saying jokes to herself as she prepared for the show. Can you stop taking those damn selfies, Allie, just for one minute? Kyle called with exasperation. No, no, I can't, Allie countered. I don't want to disappoint my 10,000 Instagram followers. She smiled at Kyle. Allie, you should be promoting the detective agency. We need the work. It's not all about your part-time modeling career. You say part-time like it's a bad thing, Allie retorted. You two argue like an old married couple, Jane noted. We are far from that, Kyle said defensively. How did such a sweet girl end up working for a stiff like this? Jane asked Allie as she pointed to Kyle with contempt. Kyle used to date my roommate, Allie explained. We got on better than they ever did. When he started the social media detective agency, I was trying to survive on a modeling career and I needed extra income. So you saved Kyle and he's the damsel in distress? Jane asked. Pretty much, Allie said. Hey, Kyle broke in with a smile. I'm a pretty sexy damsel. These fitted chinos don't come cheap. And how long do you plan on working for him? Sharita asked Allie. Just until my modeling career takes off, I'm going to be the next Instagram it girl. Hashtag fitspiration. Hashtag dreaming, Kyle countered. Don't worry, Jane. She'll be working for me for a long time. Dick, Allie called him. She looked across at Kyle, annoyed for a moment. Then she went back to taking pics on her phone. Well, it's time for me to go out there and do the show, Jane said. Keep an eye on Twitter and have a look at the crowd out there. Have a great show, Jane, Allie called after her. <laughs>